Hello and welcome to ClearBooks. In this video we're going to take a quick look at ClearBooks Micro and go through the software's main features. The key thing for most small businesses is invoicing, so let's start with the sales invoices feature. On this screen you can enter one invoice on each row of the spreadsheet. First select the date. Then add your unique invoice number in the sales invoice number cell and a description of your invoice in the details cell. For example, this could be the customer's name or the type of goods or service you are selling. You can enter either the amount including VAT or the amount excluding VAT. The system will calculate VAT automatically based on the VAT rate and whether you choose to enter the amount including VAT or the amount excluding VAT. The VAT rate defaults to 20% if you are VAT registered. If your business is not VAT registered, you can easily turn this off in settings. We'll have a look at that later in the video. As you add each new sales invoice, the status will remain as unpaid. This will update once payments are added on the bank receipts section and linked back to the appropriate invoice. The sent to accountant column will update to show the date that invoices are imported into the software your accountant will be using, called ClearBooks Practice Edition. Any missing or incorrect data will be highlighted in pink. If the invoice is unpaid, you can undo or redo your last action, or delete a row, by right-clicking on a cell and selecting the appropriate action. If you would like to delete a paid or part-paid invoice, you will first need to remove the payment. We'll explain how to do this soon when we're looking at the bank receipts screen. Now, let's take a look at the settings section. As we mentioned earlier, the settings menu allows you to set up your VAT registration. If you select a VAT registered scheme, you can choose between a standard, cash or flat rate scheme. Choosing a flat rate scheme allows you to enter your flat rate percentage and whether your scheme is on the basic or cash basis turnover method. The settings menu also lets you enter your bank account details, which you will need to do in order to start entering your payments. You can add the bank account name, opening balance and opening balance date. The settings bank accounts menu will now list all the bank accounts you have saved. You can add more whenever you need to by clicking on the add bank account button or update existing accounts by clicking on the edit button. Now we'll take a look at recording your bank receipts. The bank receipts section lets you record the money you have received in your bank accounts on each row. Enter the date, amount and details for each payment you've received. If you are explaining a receipt of money that does not come from your company's main business, then select other income or interest in the income type drop down list. Receipts of this type cannot be allocated to sales invoices. Finally, select the bank that the money was paid into. All of the bank accounts that you created in the settings section earlier will be listed there. To create a payment and link it to a sales invoice, enter the date, amount, and details of the payment you received. In the income type drop down list, select payment for invoice and then select the bank that the money was paid into. An Allocate button will now appear in the Sales Invoice Number cell. Clicking the Allocate button will take you to the Allocate menu. Choose which invoice to apply the payment to by clicking on the appropriate checkbox and entering the appropriate amount in the Amount to Apply box. Once that's done, hit the Save button when you have fully allocated the payment. When the payment has been allocated, the invoice number will replace the Allocate button under the Sales Invoice Number column. Additionally, back on the Sales Invoices section, the status will update to show which invoices are paid or part paid. 
It's also important to remember that invoices with the status cannot be edited. You will need to remove the payment to edit the invoice, which we will now explain. To change the amounts allocated to your invoice or to remove the payments completely from each invoice, click on the button that's displaying the invoice numbers on the bank receipts section. To remove any payments completely, remove all of the ticks from the checkboxes next to each invoice and then click Save. If an invoice is paid or part paid, removing the payment completely will convert the status of the invoice back to unpaid and you'll then be able to edit the invoice. To change the amounts that are allocated, click on the appropriate checkboxes and update the amount box as appropriate. Hit the Save button when you have fully allocated the payment. Now, all that's left to do is to take a look at the Expenditures section. Here, you can record all of the paid company expenses on each row of the spreadsheet. First, select the date. Add the reference number which you will find on the purchase invoice that you received from your supplier, if you have one, into the reference cell. Add a description of your expense in the detail cell. This could be the type of goods or service that you bought. You can enter the amount including VAT or the amount excluding VAT. The system will calculate VAT automatically based on the VAT rate and whether you chose to enter the amount including VAT or the amount excluding VAT. The VAT rate defaults to 20% if you are VAT registered. The Paid From drop-down box is a required cell which allows you to choose the payment method. For example, this could be any of your bank accounts, cash, a director's loan account or credit card. The expense type drop down box is also a required cell which lets you choose the type of expense from a fixed list. The expense type is important as it helps to determine how the expense is accounted for. The sent to accountant column will update to show the date on which expenses are imported into the software your accountant will be using called Clearbooks Practice Edition. Missing or incorrect data will be highlighted in pink. Finally, you can also undo your last action or delete a row by right clicking on a cell and selecting the action you want to perform. We've now looked through all of the main features of Clearbooks Micro, so we hope you found this video useful and that you enjoy using the software. Remember, if you have any questions about how to use Clearbooks Micro or any of Clearbooks products, our friendly UK-based support team is always happy to help. Thank you for watching.